G'day guys, welcome back to another episode out there doing it with Jay Wilds, brought to you by local hunting and fishing. All right, Scott's just dropped me in, Halley Rural. Give him a call if you want to go for a hunt in the Canterbury region. It's quite good actually. At the hangar this morning, there was three other parties flying in for their rural huntings. Yeah, if you're going to do a hunt in Canterbury, make sure you give Scott at Halley Rural a call. Look at this, look where we are. Got an exciting plan for the next seven days, guys. But first, before I tell you what we're doing, let's find a good spot for the tent. All right, I want a flat spot. What do we got, what do we got? I don't know, I'm almost thinking the spot right next to where Scott dropped me off. It's actually the flattest. I think we're gonna set our tent up right here. And the tent I brought along on this trip is my MSR Hubba Hubba two person. I think this tent has gotta be one of my favorites. This tent here is a really good one for the type of hunt we're about to do over the next seven days. If you're after a new tent, you can have a look at your MSR range at your local hunting and fishing store. So I'll let you know the goals for this trip, guys. So I'm planning to be in the mountains for roughly the next seven days, give or take. It's the peak of the roar, so it's the rut. Probably about five different game species that we could hunt or that we could potentially find on this trip. We've got red deer, we've got fallow deer, we've got tar, we've got chamois, wild boar. So what's good about that guys is it's a bit of variety. It's going to be, keep it pretty exciting for you guys because no matter what gully, no matter what valley we're looking into, who knows what we're going to find. That is very exciting. There we go, camp set up. Pretty happy with the spot actually. I'm gonna put the bagara together, get some bits and pieces, and then we might head up to one of these high points behind camp and just have a glass for this evening and see what we can see moving about. So I brought my Mountain 2.0 on this trip, guys, the 300 wind mag. I just feel like there's a potential of a longer shot here. You can see the country, it's pretty open. If I'm targeting a big stag, I feel like the 300 Winchester Magnum is the rifle that I want to be sitting behind. And that's my old trusty Mountain 2.0 from Bagara. Loophole VX5 on the top. Right, it is quarter to four. So let's get the pack on, head up to the hill behind me, start glassing into the catchment over in that direction. Let's go. Pack's a lot lighter now. I get to that tussocky point right there. Lots of country to glass. I think we'll just get comfortable here. I'm using this bush right in front of me as cover. It's good because it's quite high and I can hide behind it. Like peek out the side to look down there. I'm sure there's going to be some animals in there. There's heaps of scrub. Lots of places for things to hide. Just spotted what looks like three chamois across the valley. Pretty cool. First animals for the trip. That's pretty cool. Very cool. That sun's just gone behind the clouds up there. Now I can see across the valley really well. You can see the cloud rolling in behind me. I'm looking into so much area where animals could be hiding. It's got to be a big old stag here somewhere, man. We got another chamois, another chamois on my side. We've got three more chamois on our side. Cloud's starting to move in, so just managed to spot them before that cloud moved in. Pretty cool. A lot of chamois. <laughs> Where's the big old stags? It's getting cold, man. I put my puffer on. There's one right below us. About 200 metres down, another chamois, <laughs> just making his way through that tussock feeding. Man, no stags yet. That light's fading guys. No deer yet, plenty of chamois. If I see anything else exciting I'll let you know, otherwise we'll catch you guys in the morning. Ah, good morning guys. Very cold. <laughs> Ice on the tent. It's just starting to get light. Nice morning though. Real nice morning. Man, it's 
such a nice morning. Have a quick look, scan the area, make sure there's nothing going to see us, and then I'll get set up properly. Such a nice morning. The sun's just starting to peek over the mountain. We've got eight, eight chamois. Just walking in single file. Right up on that mountain top there. Highly doubt there'll be a buck in there at this time of year. Normally it's just females and young ones. All the bucks are pretty solitary at the moment. Get a coffee in me, eh, guys, while a glass. You know what I'm like with coffees. Gotta have one. I think today we're gonna go and check out some new country. Lots of chamois here, very exciting about that. But you know how I'm looking for deer. As these different valleys light up in the sun, animals might move out and bed down in the sun, try to warm up. So I might see something, might see something new yet. Get moving, try find some deer. I've just spotted a couple of hogs down there, a couple of wild pigs. Right down that sort of swampy, scrubby gully. Really cool colour phase. It's what we call blue. It's like a silvery blue colour. It's two of them. Still no deer though. Another species for us on our trip. It's the afternoon. I didn't see anything else this morning apart from a doe chamois and her kid. I've gone back to camp, had some lunch, and now I'm slowly making my way around the face and we're going to get to the top of that hill there. And we're going to look over that other side. It's 20 past two, so it's pretty early. But I just want to get there and get set up before things start to move. We're hoping this evening, guys, we can find a big old stag. That's the goal. So we're gonna look very hard, and we're gonna make it happen. Oh, there's a deer on that shaded face. Looks to be alone. Definitely alone, but good to see. We're gonna head to that next point right there. Very excited to see what's over the top of that hill. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. Just about to creep over through the tussock and have the first look. That sun's going down. What I'm going to do before I move my bag down in there, I'm going to put some warm layers on way back here, way away from the edge so that nothing can see me. As soon as that sun goes behind the mountains, it's going to get really good in there because at the moment there's heaps of glare coming in. It's hard to glass down in there. So. amazing view. I can actually smell something. I'm not sure if it's a red deer, a female red deer. For some reason I can't figure it out. It's like quite faint but it's hit just here somewhere. There's a slight breeze coming this direction. How good that looked over there. I didn't see nothing. Last bit of light. I've come back over to where we saw that deer earlier on. I've got about 10 minutes of light left. So I think tomorrow we might have to change up our plan completely. I might pack up camp and I might head up the valley a long way and set up another camp somewhere. Open up some new country because I'm not really feeling it, hey, not here. If I was looking for chamois, maybe, but I'm not. <laughs> All right, guys. A lot's happened since you last saw me. It's been a couple of days. I ended up shifting camp a couple of times. I really hunted the heck out of that area. I saw a lot more chamois, a ton of chamois, a lot more wild pigs, but no more deer at all. I was really just after a change of stag. Stag right here. Stag right here. Nice young stag. He's about 60 yards from me right now. Very, very cool. How's that for an interview, guys? <laughs> so as I was saying, after looking at thousands of acres of that open country, I needed some bush. <laughs> I set up camp on a nice little bench, relocated into a new catchment, and this is the first morning. It's not long gone daylight. I'm feeling really positive.
couple of irons over here, guys, and looks like there's a stag with them. I just got a glimpse of him moving through the scrub, basically directly opposite us on the valley here. Oh, there he is. He's claimed all those girls there. I'll need to get the spotting scope out, but it's in my bag. He doesn't look overly old, though, going by his body. Very cool. Do you hear that? Sounded like a roar up the valley. Oh, stag. Another stag. I'll get the camera on it for you guys. Nice looking stag, that one. Look how dark his antlers are. It's been a good morning, guys. Very cool. I've just had a look at him through the spotting scope. For a second now, I thought I'd left my spotting scope at home. <laughs> I'm using the same tripod for the spotting scope and this camera, so I can only use one at a time. But yeah, I thought I left my spotting scope at home. I've got a new gun safe, and it's a big gun safe, and I put spotting scopes and stuff like that in there. I thought I left it at home for a second, but luckily I've got it. It's the first time I've had to use it on this trip. <laughs> it was at the bottom of my pack underneath my jacket. But yeah, bit of a blind moment for me. My new gun safe, it's a Spiker 15 gun. Very cool man, I can store all sorts of stuff in there, not just rifles. I can keep cameras in there, you can keep all sorts of stuff, so highly recommend it guys. If you're in the market for a new gun safe, go and have a look at your Spiker range down at your local hunting and fishing. Another stag, another stag just coming over the top up here. That's an older looking animal. Looks like he's broken his main beam though. He looks like an old battler, eh? That's the sort of animal we're looking for guys, I think. This guy's got a safe pass, so may as well grow his other antler back next year. How cool is it that they're just on the prowl moving around? Man, this morning's been unreal. Got a real nice basin in front of me. Hopefully he just works that basin, gives us a bit of a show for a while. Yeah, look, he's coming down towards me now. Three, three, five. So he's in shooting range right there. Okay, a little update. He's now right below us. Just over 200 metres away. He's still roaring. Searching, patrolling the area. He's just making his way up that other face now. And he's going to go bed down. Right out in the open. Oh guys, that has made my morning, that. I can see him, he's bedded down right on the edge of those trees right there. That's him right there. Can you imagine what it would have looked like seeing him fight and snap that antler off? That would have been a heck of a fight. I'm pretty keen just to slip out of here. It's going to be real interesting to see what happens this evening when things start to move around again. Time for a coffee guys. Here's my little hole tucked away in here. I can still see out. If I stand up I can still see our bedded stag. All the deer seem to have bedded down and they all bedded down roughly around the same time as that stag who bedded out in the open where I can see him. So I'm going to watch that stag. It can be a little gauge on animal movement guys. If you're lucky enough to see an animal bedded mid-morning, you know it's mid-morning 10 o'clock at the moment, when he gets up and starts moving a lot of the other deer in the area are going to do the same thing. So obviously they're crepuscular. They're most active during the morning and the evening, dawn and dusk, you know. But they often get up for a midday snack. And if you're lucky enough to see an animal, like we can see this stag just over here. When he gets up and starts moving around, I'm going to be scanning the area. And I can guarantee you there will be some more deer following his time cycle. So that's probably a good field tip, guys. If you can see an animal, if you're lucky enough to see an animal, watch him, study what he's doing. And more often than not, the other deer in the area are going to do a similar thing. And that's this episode's field tip brought to you by a local hunting and fishing. It's early afternoon. Our big one antlered stag has got up. He's made his way down the bottom, across the main flow, and now he's going up the opposite face. He's on a mission. Shortly after he got up, two hinds appeared. 
up and feeding, moving around. That's our cue, guys. We're going to get my pack on. We're going to hunt our way along, glassing, looking for animals. But it seems the animals are starting to move. We've got a few hours till prime time. So let's go look into some new country for this evening. Up to the top. Look at this. Stags have been rubbing their antlers on this tree. Another one just behind me too. A little stags pad up here. I can see why, come up here, beat the tree up, any roar, everything will hear him. To that next knob over there we'll sit down and have another look from there i'll try to sneak over there it's all open country but i can't see anything out feeding or bellbirds amazing eh? yeah i can't see anything out so i think we're safe to get over there now 239 a little bit of time before the prime time
just pack up the stuff and let's get down there while there's a bit of daylight. Rifles unloaded, pack these cameras away. <sighs> let's go. What a beast of a stag, man. Look at that. Epic stag. This is exactly the sort of stag I was looking for. Look at the bases on them. Look how thick and girthy those bases are. Incredible, man. Huge main beams on them. So back home, my little family, Catherine and Baby River. Catherine has tasked me with bringing home some venison. This guy here is going to fill our freezer, that's for sure. I'll be taking all the meat off this animal. It's been a trip I'm not going to forget, that's for sure. So huge shout out to Scott and the team at Halley Rural. If you want to do a hunt like this on public land, this is public land. If you want to do a hunt like this, make sure you hit Scott up. I'm going to put his website in the description below. From his base in Methan, he's got access to some amazing valleys. Rangitata, Rakaia, Waimak, Wilberforce, like, it's endless where you could go. So seriously, if you want to do a hunt like this, hit Scott up at Halley Rural Methan. Huge shout out to those guys because this has been a freaking epic trip, man. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. One last thing, how good is it when the animal drops on the spot? Huge faith in my rifle, 300 Winchester Magnum. Ideal rifle for big stags, I reckon. And that's in the Bagara Mountain 2.0 with a VX5 loophole on the top. You guys know my rifle. It's my old trusty. It's so good to have really good faith in your equipment though, I must say, guys. All right, I'm going to get a couple of photos and then I'm going to start dealing to this animal. I'd say it's probably going to be two or three trips of meat back to camp. If you've enjoyed the episode, please consider subscribing, comment, like, do all the things. I'm also doing podcasts about these adventures, these trips, these hunts. More detail than you get in the video. And generally, I'm recording the podcast while I'm actually in the hunt, in the moment type action. So go and check those out. There'll be a link in the description as well. Thanks, guys. Thanks once again for joining us on this hunt. And we'll see you guys on the next episode out there doing it with Jay Wilds, brought to you by your local hunting and fishing.